Hi, I'm going to get started because we've, um, well, yeah, we've got a little bit of a workshop to do today. Hopefully, don't freak out. There's a little bit of participation. That's all right. Don't leave right now. Because um, I want to share with you um, retrospective patterns that um, I found useful. And, you know, hopefully you can take some of these away and do them with your teams and organizations. Because it, the inspiration for this talk really came um, from, I was working with a team. I started with a pilot team, and I was their scrum master to help them get started. That was about four and a half years ago. I now um, am one of the executives, and there's 60 teams on my um, program now, and we're um, in quite a large organization. And, you know, I rarely go to the team's retrospectives, because, you know, but I thought I'd like to sort of pop in and see how they're going. And I went to a couple of them, um, and after a while, every team in their retrospectives said, what went well, what didn't go well, what we're going to improve next time. And I thought, oh, maybe it's not every team, maybe I've just gone to one team that's kind of just going through the motions, but consistently every team I went into was sort of doing the same pattern, and it was sort of, and then I thought, well, I'll go to one of the teams, can you suggest, you know, to the program manager, I asked them, you know, what's your best team, because I'll go and see their retro, because I wanted to see something really inspiring. And I turned up at the allotted time that the retro was in the calendar, um, and they weren't doing a retro. And I said, why? And they said, we're too busy, we've got to deliver. And I thought, there's something going wrong here. We really need to think about retrospectives, because they're one of the key events in Scrum, as you know. Um, so we wanted to get the most out of it. So, you know, we're too busy to do retrospectives. What's going to happen if we're too busy to do retrospectives? We're not going to improve, are we? Do you see this all the time? I'm seeing a lot of nodding of heads, yeah. So I went back and I thought, well, why do we do retrospectives? You know, what's so important about it? And it's really about, well, we're wanting to inspect what we just did in the last sprint. What, what was the product increment that we just had? And then based on that, we're adapting what we want to do next time. And the whole point is that we're learning from that. We've got transparency about the improvements that we're making. And we're running little experiments to see if we actually, actually did improve. And more importantly, it's meant to be a safe space. So I was, you know, originally with them as their Agile coach, so I didn't really feel that me coming in there was not going to be a safe space, but I found out that me just being in that dynamic actually changed it for them and they were freaking out a little bit. So um, what I thought about, no, it's very important to create that safe space for the teams as well. And going back to the Prime Directive, most of you have heard of the Prime Directive. Everyone who comes in your team is there trying to do their best every day with the skills um, that they want to do based on the knowledge of what they have now. Um, so we really went back to, to basics with this. We got all the scrum masters and kind of talked about, well, how can we make our retrospectives better? And our idea was we do two weekly sprints. So let's come up with 26 retrospective patterns so that each and every sprint you've got something different and really challenge ourselves to do something different. I'm not going to go through all 26 retrospective patterns. Don't worry about that. I'm going to sort of group them and show you a few of my favorites as well. But the whole point of it was to make sure that it's a, it's a place where there's no blame, there's no judgment. We're actually trying to work out, well, OK, that didn't work. What can we do better? And I really like Deb's failure bow, so I'll probably use that in our retrospectives as well. But it's about the growth mindset. And I guess that's why we're here today, talking about agile mindset. Because your retrospectives are where you can grow and learn and really get back to those values about what are we here as a team? How can we make the people, the processes, the technology better for you? Because if we, don't, if we do the same thing all the time, we're not going to get any improvements. We really need to challenge ourselves to get that continuous improvements. And sometimes too many of our retrospectives fail to give us those meaningful results. So I went back to the definitive book, and most of you have probably read this or know of it, um, with Esther Darby and Deanna Larson. And I really love their fr framework for retrospectives. And it really sort of got to the heart of what we probably were fit getting to do was setting the stage, gathering some data. Let's get some metrics on how we did. Let's get something to sort of see whether what we thought we were doing worked or not. From that, generate the insights. Then the most important part of the retrospective is working out what to do to make it better next time. So deciding what to do, close the retrospective, and then try that. Do mini experiments, see if it works. Come back at the net retrospective 
and start again. It, for me, it's probably the key event in um, Scrum is the retrospective. Because too many of my teams were doing zombie Scrum. Have you heard of zombie Scrum? Where people are just going through the motions. There's no beating heart. There's nothing saying, hey, this person's alive. The team were achieving. They were getting good results. But there was no passion. They were finding it boring. They weren't having fun. No desire for outside contact. They weren't talking to each other. Um, no emotional response to whether being successful or failing. Um, and no desire to improve. So to try and stop zombie scrum, we started to look at patterns. Because we thought if we do a different approach, surely we'll get different results. Because we want to grow that mindset. And for us, we were doing our job, particularly in those teams. We had our frameworks. We were using Scrum, Kanban, XP, Bit of Safe, and other, other frameworks that we found useful. So we were doing Scrum. We had focus, but we weren't being Agile. We were doing Agile without being Agile. And you really need to be both. If you're just doing Agile, you're missing all that collaboration, trust, respect, all the things that are about that growth mindset. So it's not enough to just go through the motions. We wanted to get out of the zombie scrum pattern. So we looked at gathering data, generating insights as some key patterns here. And here's a few patterns that we found really, really useful that we've put together. Mad, sad, glad, really simple, butcher's paper, put them up, ask them in the sprint, reflect on the last two weeks or four weeks. What really worked for us? What made you mad? What do you want to change? What made you a bit sad about that? But what made you really happy? What really sort of worked really well for us? Any sort of alliteration like that will work. We do wow, wonder, and what the. So you can just do any pattern that you like just to mix it up. Um, the De Bono's thinking hats. I don't know if any of you have tried this. One of my scrum masters actually went down to the shop and just bought some colorful party hats in the different colors. And each of the team member would put a, a hat on and see the, talk about the sprint from their perspective wearing that hat. So for example, the green hat thinking is focusing on creativity, politi possibilities, alternatives. So that person said, well, what if we kept doing this and what if we kept doing that? Really spurring that thinking. So that green hat thinking. It really helps them to think about the sprint from another's perspective. The challenge we sometimes do with this pattern is getting someone who's the most extroverted in the room and have them actually play a different role with a different hat, just to sort of see how the other person might have felt. This one I really love, and it's quite visual. If you can't draw, it's OK, because as you can see, these are some of my really bad drawings here. But the idea is draw a sailing boat. Um, put some rocks there. Put the island. And sort of get them on post-it notes to actually talk to you about, well, the sailboat's obviously our team. Um, the island is our goal. What are we going to do? It could be the sprint goal or it could be our project. Um, the wind. What's the thing that's helping us get there? And we put our post-it notes behind there because that's the wind helping us. The anchor. What are the things that are holding us back? Let's call them out. And then the rocks. What are the things that are really preventing you that the team actually can't solve, that we actually need to escalate to somebody else? So you can see that just with a very simple pattern like that and a drawing, um, it really gets deeper conversations and gets people talking more. Um, if you're better at drawing balloons than I am, the balloons is a similar concept. What's the hot air that's making the balloon rise? What are the sandbags that are pulling us down? Those sort of things. Um, drag racing and the racing tracks. Lots and lots of different patterns. I've seen one of my teams um, do cricket as one of these things as well. So um, many, many ways to do that. Really simple pattern just a plus and a delta. What's actually were the positives we saw and what are the things that we want to change? Really, really positive things like that. This one, and mix it up. Just by, you're asking a very similar question, but just in a different way. Um, if you can draw, all you need is butcher's paper and some pens. Um, you know, what went well? What did we learn? Um, what do we need to do differently? And one of the things that really puzzled us that we found hard. Um, I did make an attempt um, to do some superheroes because there were a lot of superhero movies coming out at the time. Um, the first thing that my developers mentioned to me was that I'm mixing DC and Marvel Universe and you shouldn't do that. So I got feedback on that, but you know, that's my favorite one. Um, but just, you know, talking about, you know, from the different 
strengths of, you know, what was daring, what was super that happened, um, you know, what was strange that happened, just mixing the patterns up. One word is a really good one as well. So everyone just get a post-it note and they just write one word of what the sprint meant to them. Um, and then they explain what that is. You might see some patterns across the team. Um, so you discuss those, they're really interesting. But yeah, really powerful, what's one word? People find it hard to restrict themselves to one word. Um, but yeah, it's really, really powerful. And if you've got um, sort of a theme or there's a movie coming out at the time, Fast and the Furious were really um, quite popular when this came out with my team. So we talked about, well, what were the fast things? What made the sprint go really quickly? What made us furious? What was the fun thing or the funny things that happened? Um, what was the first for us? What was, the, was that something that we did for the first time? Let's think about that. And what was fantastic that we'd like to do again? So there are ones that were just about generating data and insight, which was really good. And then we thought, well, what's the point of a retrospective if we're not actually getting an actionable improvement at the end of it? So we really challenged ourselves, and some retrospective patterns actually lend themselves that to a bit more. So if, you, if you're wanting to change things, things haven't gone so well, some of these patterns are quite good. Um, the three L's, the liked, lacked, and learned, really good one for sort of seeing what happened and gather data. But the key thing when you do do this is actually get them to dot vote. What are the things that actually we think are important for us to take action on that we want to think about and actually change in the next sprint? So that dot voting um, is just as powerful. Everyone understands the dot voting where you get to put three dots on the things that are most important. So just taking the gathering of data and putting dots on it helps you identify what those actionable items are. Snakes and ladders, just a very, very simple one. You can do this visually as well. Um, but the snakes are the impediments. The ladder is the good practices that we forgot to do or we need to start doing. Very, very similar, similar to the starfish pattern where you're talking about what do we keep doing, what do we stop doing, what do we want to start doing, what should we do more of and what should we do less of. Just very, very simple things. Again, post-it notes and pens um, for the retrospective. And then the team members talk about those different patterns for themselves. One that I like to do, if particularly you're finding that, say, the retrospective is being missed or different parts of the sprint seem to be going a bit slow for them, I actually get them to put the different um, events and then rate those on a ROTI scale, which is return on time investment. Um, a high ROTI means, look, that was really worthwhile. Um, a five means that was fantastic, best meeting and event I've ever been to. A one was, please, could you just let me go back to my desk and code? I got nothing out of that. And the idea isn't to make everything a five. The idea is to identify where these ones and twos and things that aren't going well and actually say, well, okay, obviously you're not getting a lot out of the retrospective. What can we do to change that from a two to a three? We're not trying to get from a two to a five straight away but what can we make it to do better next time? So I really like the ROTI score if I'm trying to sort of understand that. And then I always ask them for, well, what can we do next to improve it? A good one to sort of see the mix and capabilities of your team is start to talk about the knowledge and skills that you've got in your team. Um, and a lot of it is sort of thinking about what do we know? Um, what did we know we didn't know? Um, what did we know that we know? And what do we know that we don't know? And the idea is to put all that up on the chart and then saying, okay, well, how do we move from what we don't know to knowing? What do we need to do to move it from this side to that side so that we can understand a little bit more? Um, and it's about moving through the different quadrants. The key thing is make sure that you walk away with that action item. Other sort of retrospectives, you might be having a lot of dysfunction in your team or you might have a new team that you're forming with and you want to think about team building. <laughs> so some of those that I really like are the appreciative um, uh, retrospectives. And these are really good if your team's had a pretty hard time, if there might have been some tension in the team or there's some things not going quite right. Um, often we're so focused on what went wrong, we forget to think about all the really good things that went right and appreciate our team members. So appreciative retrospective, just, you know, what was awesome, who did a great job, 
wow, that worked well, and a thank you. And you ask them to sort of write a post-it note for each of the team members to kind of talk about what went well and what didn't go well. Um, the other thing I really love is a kudos card wall. Very, very simple. Just sort of putting up something for each and every team member to say, hey, I, I really appreciated your help on that testing. I really appreciated how you helped me understand um, and paired with me on that particular um, development piece of work. The key to when you're facilitating with a kudos card wall in particular is making sure that each and every team member has a, a card at least, rather than it just being the same person getting the card all the time. And often I put these sort of butcher's papers from the retrospectives in the team areas and I found that when we started to do this, the teams actually took a lot of pride in getting kudos cards and see who could get the most kudos cards on the wall. On the wall. And in fact, other team members where they were integrating or helping other teams, because we've got 60 teams with this particular group, um, if they helped another team out, they'd put kudos cards on their walls as well, which was really, really cool. One that I did recently that I, I wasn't sure it would go well was, does everyone know the Cards Against Humanity game? No, maybe not so much. Well, there's a, a version of it called Cards Against Agility. They give you generic statements and then using different phrases or words from Agile, the team is given a selection of cards and they have to try and find the best fit. So we did this as kind of a bit of fun. So they said, you know, a romantic candlelit dinner would be incomplete without a JIRA ticket, our definition of done, and a retrospective. And then we voted on who was the most funny answer to that. And it was a good way to sort of do a bit of team building. So um, this is hopefully, oh, it might not work, no, the video. So we put all the, everyone was in the middle, but we put tables around there, we had 125 people, and they competed for spots to do their cards against agility. It was really, really fun. One I tend to do if I do have a few teams that are newly forming is candy love. All you need is a packet of M&Ms or Skittles or equivalent where they've got different colored candy. Um, and it's just to get to know your team a little bit better. So you pull a candy out, who doesn't like chocolate and candy? And you pull a colour out, and depending on which colour you pick out of there, you'll answer a question on that. And the, the key to the questions is to kind of have a mix of some things that are work-related, but some things that are personal to find out a little bit more about people. So the red ones, what you love about your work. Yellow, your life goal, for example. Brown might be your favourite movie. Orange, something you like about your job. And blue, the best part of the sprint. So you can mix it up depending on how many colours you've got. And Everyone, once you do one round, everyone wants more candy, so you can keep doing that for quite a while. And it helps you get to understand. I actually um, did this recently with um, one of my groups, and one of the girls, I didn't realise that in her holiday period, um, went to Bora Bora and helped build houses for underprivileged people. Like, I wouldn't have known that without this particular exercise. And it kind of gave me a deep, deep insight into what's important to her. Um, it was really, really cool. Another one that's quite popular is, again, sort of looking at the mix of skills in the teams and who's good at what and what they like to do, um, is using any sort of spider web diagram you've got that sort of identifies the different capabilities and requirements that you've got, um, and then asking your team to rate themselves against that. You know, how are we on knowledge sharing? Is that something that we're focused on? Is that something that we're doing? Um, how do we communicate? What's our quality like? Let's plot ourselves on that. You can do it individually or as how you feel you are doing as a team. And then if we want to do something about, well, what's the possibilities and what's next? Um, something I do, particularly with um, my leadership team and executives or at the program level, is things called a future perspective. And what that is, is we're looking forward 12 months ahead and we kind of say, okay, well, this is where we want to be in 12 months. So let's think about what that looks like. What are the attitudes um, that we'll see? What are the behaviours? If I'm walking around the floor in 12 months' time, what are the behaviours that I'm going to see? What's the culture going to be like? And then when we've sort of thought about that, then we look at, well, what enablers do we need from a people, process and technology point of view to help us get there? And that actually helps us develop our change plan, our change roadmap or our transition plan of how we're going to do it better. This is one I love from one of my teams called Mamma Mia. I don't know if they named it because my name's Mia and they called it Mamma Mia. I don't know whether they were just trying to be in my good books, but um, yeah. We asked them at the beginning of um, a program increment, so we were doing SAFE at the time, um, which is a you know, three-month period of time. We said, write yourself a postcard 
as if we've just completed this 12-week planning. Um, and tell me how it went. So Jeff, one of my product owners, said, look, really enjoyed working well on refined stories that we can deliver in our sprints because they're having trouble splitting things. Um, our tasks really take more than a day to complete. Our team members are multi-skilled, they're collaborating, and we love experimenting new ways of working. And then we actually asked them at the end of the PI, at the end of the 12 weeks, read back your card and see whether you are true to that or not. And most of them, it actually, by writing it down in their postcard, which again, they put in their team area, they were thinking about it each and every sprint of, okay, well, this is what it wants, we want it to look like. Um, really, really powerful, really, really good at, to do it at their review. Team health, um, we also happiness rate us sometimes because we spend a lot of time at work. We want to make sure that we're enjoying what we're doing. Um, our people, our interactions are really important to us. Um, but let's also look at our processes and tools and if they're stopping us from actually being productive, having fun, enjoying the work as well. And then obviously where you've got a lot of this, um, talk to them about, okay, well, what's going on there? Let's drill down into that. Let's understand what we can do better. But yeah, very, very simple tools, very, very easy way to gather data on this. Um, if you love Lego, and I love Lego, and I've got a lot of Lego around, sometimes just even a simple thing of eight pieces of Lego each, give me an animal or give me something that explains how you felt the sprint went. Um, and share that with the group. Tell us about how you're feeling. Um, really, really interesting to see what they come up with. Some of them are very creative. This was one of my more creative ones. Um, with the animals, well, because it was an animal one I asked them to do, a lot of them were eagles and soaring and felt things were going well. Um, this guy was building a fortress because he felt that everyone was against him and he wasn't sort of, he was on guard all the time. So it was really, really interesting that just by doing that Lego, the team actually said, well, actually, I didn't even realise that Chris was going through that. I didn't realise that we were all doing that. But he was the one developer, the other two developers were on holidays and everyone left him and just um, he really struggled that sprint. We wouldn't have known it if we hadn't done this exercise and people had uh, a much more renewed um, understanding of like, we're working with people, we need to really think about these things. And again, very similar concept, weather, seasons, anything like that works to sort of say, well, you know, what's the sunny stuff? What's the clouds that are really dampening things or stopping us? You know, how do we get out of that? What are the seasons? And really interesting if you've got different people in your team see the sprint a different way. If someone felt it felt like winter and other people thought it was all sunny and great, drill down into that. Why is that happening? So this is why this is a workshop and the interactive part. So I've shared just some of the patterns that our teams have now started to use and we found that it really helped us. Um, what I want you to get, and Self-organized, apparently the magic number of team member size is 10. Um, so if you can get in groups, grab some post-it notes and butcher's paper, and I'd like you to share with your group um, what's a really interesting pattern that you use that you find really effective, and we're gonna share some of those with the group. Really sort of wanna see what yours are. Um, I'm gonna gather them up, I'll add them to the slide so that you can actually um, um, get a copy of all the different ideas and inspirations and we'll have a two years worth of retrospectives probably by the end of this. We've got post-it notes at the end there. We've got butcher's paper here. Um, you can put them up on, we've got masking tape to put them up on the side, um, but I'd write on the post-it note rather than on the wall if that's okay because we don't want to um, damage that. But yeah, we're just going to have 10 minutes to share all your patterns with the people closest to you, sort of six to 10 people, up to you how many you want to share that with. If you want to do it in twos or threes, that's up to you too. More the merrier. Okay. Oh, we've got... Okay, we've got plenty of post-its now. Yeah. So just, um, just grab them all. Just grab some paper, some post-its, some pens. There you go. Pull them all off. More paper. 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 Anybody need more paper? Yeah, yeah, write on a sticky, share it with your group. Yeah. 
And then if you need pens, we've got plenty of pens. More pens here. I'll take those to start. I've got some more black here. Oh, yeah, sure. Get, get some more. Get some more colors. Oh. Of course you can. <laughs> well, I was just wanted to come on before retrospective. Share your biggest retrospective pattern. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oops. No, but I've lost my phone. Okay. Yeah, just write your favorite and then share them with the group. Yeah, cool. Yeah, retrospective patterns that you want to share with the group. Some cool ones, and yeah, we'll get you to share some of them. The ones that you think are the best ones. Something that you already have. Something that you've tried, different to the slide. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so just share ones that you've found really interesting. Yeah. No, no, if you've got a different one. Yeah, yeah, something that you've done that worked really well for your team. Doesn't have to be that. If you've got a better one, that's what we want. <laughs> Finalise your pattern and think um, in the group which um, patterns you'd like to share. We're going to um, come back together as a group and share them. Enough pens, I've got some better ones. These black ones might be better. Yeah. Learn it and then we will improve on that. So cool. slowly we will learn. Yeah, yeah, it's like I an like elegant like model where we capture all the sentiments. Oh, I like it. Yeah, that's a great model. Yeah. Cool. Just need one of those. Okay. Um, just finalize everything now. Oh, yes, cool. Okay. So just where you are, um, we've got a microphone and we're just going to go around to each group and want you to share the best couple of patterns that you came up with. So. Who'd like to go first? You would? Okay. Over here. So come up the front, hold your pattern up. Okay. All right. So everybody? Right. Here's our retrospective techniques here. Okay. All right. Okay, go. Right here, uh, we we actually affinity groups our stuff. We've got emotional stuff down here. The thing we really wanted to talk about was using art of some kind or visualizations. We talked about using Lego or coming up with some kind of drawing a picture of the sprints that happened. Anything visual 
thing that was goes back to your uh, Lego thing. Yeah, the Lego thing. Interpretive dance. That that yep. would also be artistic. Yeah. But we came up with one unifying thing that could be applied to every single retrospective, and that's theory. That's the unifying theory for all retrospectives. Cool. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through this quickly because we're getting close to time. How about uh, this group here? So do you want to come out the front so everyone can see you? Yes. Okay. Oh, I will just start. Then yes. We are the group like food. <laughs> Uh, this is the first point that I uh, have put up over here, that you know, we like uh, retrospectives only happen when you are reinforcing it. So how can you reinforce that? That happens at two levels. The first is our team members will come, definitely they'll say some problems are there. And if the problems are not resolved, the team is not going to, you know, uh, assemble again. The best way to do it is reinforce by actually taking just one part of it also and run with it and see the impact of it for the next, before the next session. And this will actually reinforce your team to actually, you know, again report if there are issues. Uh, one of the, the things that we really liked, uh, which came up uh, practice was, like, you know, each uh, individual is asked to post his feedback. It's, it's actually requested, like, you know, you can just post your own feedback. One of the other practices come, who will take the ownership of the I action items? Right. So there have to be an action item against an, against each item that has been reported. Then we have got one more. A post-it can come from each member. Uh, appreciation is there for each, when you're doing it. And then uh, retrospective is open through three out of the, uh, yeah, throughout the uh, iteration. That was an interesting thing. So what happens is, uh, you know, during iteration, uh, you face problems. So you wait for the end moment, like, you know, uh, tomorrow is a retrospective, now we have to tell tomorrow. But what happens by the time you have forgotten, actually you have now, you don't re uh, remember at that point of time. So there's something like, you know, you can have, uh, like you, we call fish balls. So you can have a retrospective ball also. <laughs> Great, excellent. So we've had beer and we've had making sure everybody participates, which is excellent. Um, and I like the idea of a retrospective can happen anytime if you need it. Over here. Okay, so uh, I think we have some of the patterns which are similar we already discussed here. Uh, one out of the box pattern which we like as a team is uh, the movie name during the sprint. So what we do is uh, during retrospect, we ask the team members to tell a movie name which they feel is more aligned to how they did sprint goals. And then probably discuss about that uh, after the team has told about those. Uh, so hopefully the movie's not Titanic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Oh, that, that's fun. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. And then one more we like is like uh, uh, this one. I, yeah, you can. The first yeah, one we we'll started <coughs> with the shout outs. Yeah, the water right. outs and, and then what went well. And, then and the improvement, improvement and the action improvement, items. Action items and, and the chocolate. Chocolate's important. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I like that. That's excellent. Okay, we've got two or three more groups to go. Uh, I know there's one in the middle here. Yep. Okay. You can come out the front. So hello everyone. Uh, so our idea is uh, that uh, uh, in the first cycle of our development or whatever project we are doing, right, uh, we will do the retrospective first time, and obviously we will have lot of feedback, lot of improvements ideas. So here we are trying to show that uh, we have got lot of ideas here to improve upon. So once that cycle is over, so we call it evolution one. So we go to uh, second. Uh, second stage, which is improve, a little bit improve from the first uh, sprint. Then we will have uh, lesser uh, ideas to improve because we have improved already on many points. So slowly we will improve like this and by the end we will have only few ideas to further improve. So this is an evaluation, evolution process where we are improving on every stage of our program or project or that stage. Yeah, need to yeah, cool. Yeah, and I think that's really important because you're not going to get it right the first sprint or the second sprint or the third sprint, but just keep trying something new. You'll get there. And the happy face at the end. Yes, there's always something to improve. Oh, love it. Excellent. And it keeps going. Yeah, cool. Excellent. And there was a group over here. 
Uh, we can move to you, or if you can bring your post-it note here. Oh, one in the middle. Let's go middle and then the group over there. So should I go over there? Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Okay, so the two that we've uh, picked, uh, one of the most difficult things uh, for us is to surface things which, uh, which people believe will hurt their teammates, or um, so the people tend to say nice things about their teammates, but they'll actually not open up in a retrospective about uh, what is really troubling them, the real bad bit. So uh, it's called the no hurt card, and there is mm. one no hurt card per retrospective. So somebody who has something to say that they believe uh, might be uh, difficult for other people to listen, uh, might hurt their feelings, etc., can take one no hurt card. And the uh, understanding which the post facilitates is that uh, people who are at the receiving end of it don't get hurt. Yeah. Uh, obviously don't get defensive, no uh, blame. Of, yeah. Exactly. Psychological um, but safety. In the absence of doing this, people will hide all the uh, things that are difficult. Uh, to give you one example, which might sound trivial, but it isn't. There's a gentleman with uh, body odor issues. So he needs to come and the team needs to really struggle with that, but they sort of tell him that. Yeah. So this is how it uh, is able to come in and stuff like that. So they use that. Oh, I love it. That's excellent. But cool. The second thing that uh, we have is it's called magnetic pair. So let's say we have uh, large teams and you are doing magnetic pairing the different teams together and you're doing retrospectives. Then you have uh, everybody has a magnet and there's one extra magnet that gets passed the person across that large table and then whoever receives that has to speak uh, because it's connected to your magnet. Oh, there's no choice but to magnet it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've seen people use um, balls and different other yes. symbols but as well. It stick to your but it sticks to you. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Okay. Oh, thank you. thank you. Okay, in the final group, um, do you want us to all move to you? That's probably easiest. Oh, you can, someone can speak? Oh, they, do you want to speak to it? Yeah, just one. Okay. Yeah. So we use uh, Borel, which is kind of a key human word because it brings the three elements of uh, the lack, the light, <coughs> and the conflict. And this is a board lamp, uh, a model lamp. Okay. So uh, most importantly, you know, the lamp part, uh, especially when you have, uh, you know, the vision of the whole team and everything, um, we are actually putting three different sets of bodies in the lamp. So it's more of a sense of presence between the people. Uh, sound story can't be, you know, what is happening. What do you think that is going to be there? Which is not in there. Um, we also use uh, Sailboard. Yes. Uh, which actually shows the journey uh, by way of visualization. You know, it's actually giving a physical uh, space perspective. It's also talking about the past. You know, what uh, oh, what's you have. behind? Yeah. yeah. And then you think about in the future, uh, specifically about the same goals. Okay. Cool. It's a good version of uh, your Lego. Oh, the Lego. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well, just grab a seat quickly. We've got two minutes together before we're finishing. Whoa, I'll give you that one back. Okay, just to, I'm not going to go through the scaling patterns. Um, they're in the slides, which you'll be able to see. I, I just want to sort of um, just finish with just a couple of really key points that most of you did. And thank you for sharing the patterns. You've actually picked up a lot of different things that for your teams are really important, like the psychological safety of it, the having fun, the how do you get all your team members to talk. Um, and just even things like long for those action items. So um, thank you very much. I'll collate all those and I'll add them to the slide deck so when you download the slides, you'll see your post-it notes. I'll take a photo of them all. Thank you very much. Um, key thing, look, schedule them every sprint. Make sure that you at least hold a retrospective. I like the idea of the team that, well, if there's an issue, don't wait for the end. Let's have a retrospective on that now, which is also good. But at least have your sprint each and every sprint. Don't be tempted to skip it just because you're too busy. Facilitator, mix it up. Um, there's lots and lots of different facilitation patterns out there. You can talk to Alex about them. He's a liberating structures guy. Um, dif different ways. So liberating structures, 23 other patterns that you've got just there um, to help mix it up. Um, generate insights. Talk about what didn't go well and what, what did it get. Gather some metrics so you can actually draw some conclusions about it. But most importantly, take action. Remember that the outcome of your retrospective is to have something, even if it's just one thing, that the team can actually 
look at for next time to improve better. There's lots of lots of information, information and inspiration out there. So there's websites called Tasty Cupcakes, there's other wikis out there. Um, I've got all the different um, ones there for you to actually see for fun retrospectives. You will have noticed um, when you look at the slide deck, uh, go back to one here, each and every one of them down here has the URL to get you to that pattern. It teaches you how long you need for that pattern, what materials you need and how it works. Um, so there's lots and lots of information um, in there as well. And a lot of them come from these particular wikis and slides. So there's probably thousands of patterns. We've touched on today maybe 30 patterns. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to spice up your next retrospectives and have fun. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you want to find me, Mia Horrigan, um, my blog, these slides are actually up on my blog. There's a lot more of them up on my blog as well. Um, yeah, and please come and have a talk to me and share your patterns in the future. Love to hear about them. Thank you.